Lu, Lu, look his face. Yeah. He, he, he's, he's dangerous. He's special. We can, like, the guy is special. Yeah. Everything that could possibly yeah. be special yeah. about this guy is special. A guy like this is the type of guy that you love to watch and follow the most special guy that I've ever come across. Hello and welcome back to the Pat and Corey Sports Show. Today we are joined by one of my favorite prospects in MMA, Cage Warriors welterweight Oban Elliott. How you doing? I'm good, mate. Thanks for the lovely introduction. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Now, so in your last fight, obviously, it was a very impressive performance. Congratulations. Uh, Thank you, brother. In the preparation, uh, did you choose to watch a lot of film or did you just trust your training in the gym? Well, yeah, I've, I, uh, got, I got matched with him on 10 days notice, so I, I didn't even look at him. Yeah. I, I, uh, just, I just thought if he, if he turned up to my gym... There's no way I'd I'd let him uh, get the better of me. So it was just it, I just kind of felt like that. It, it was a, he was fucking talking all sorts of bollocks as well. He was saying, ah, oh, you know, he's he breaks. He's um, he, he, you know, he, there's nothing, there's nothing he can do. There's um, uh, he he gets tired, works a bit too hard, then he breaks. He, he uh. Does it have that fighter in him? He's more of an athlete. I was getting people sending me all the links, and I was just like, and then we did like an energized thing, and he was going, um, Oh, I just don't. How, what's the game plan? There's just no way you can beat me in this fight. There's just no way. And he was talking about Reese McKee and how he's gonna talking about everyone else. And that's how I, I knew I, I'll beat him because he, he's fucking, he was that deluded in thinking that he could just come in and. Oh, Ian Dean told me one more win and I get a title shot. So we're just gonna. Oh, and then he gave the bullshit as well. Going, um, he just ruined it for himself because he was going, ah, oh, uh, I'm not. People are gonna be like, ah, oh, Matt's not fit. He was telling everyone how fit he was, and that his weight cut was gonna be easy, and that he was training for a fight like a couple of weeks later. Mm. So he just ruined the whole thing. Yeah, he just ruined the whole thing. He, if he, what he should have done, right? If if he could, um, you know, maybe he's gonna see this. Uh, isn't no disrespect there. I get on with a lot of people he trains with. He should have made me out to be an excellent fighter. Mm -hmm. He should have like promoted me as a really, really, really good fighter. Yeah, he should have underplayed how prepared he was and said, mm -hmm. "I'm just getting off the couch." Yeah. So then. If he if he beat me, then how fantastic does that look? Yeah. And if he loses, then he's lost to this really good fighter and he's coming off the couch. But he said he he said I was told everyone how shit I was and told everyone how prepared he was and then got schooled. Yeah. So, and uh, you yeah. mentioned <laughs> it being a short notice fight. Are you just someone who's in the gym every day, all day? Yeah. Look, I, I you know I I dedicate my life to this. So like I don't. Uh, I went on a little holiday this year with my girlfriend, but I pulled out of like party holidays and I, you know, I go out like twice, three times a year in town and that. Like, I got, you know, lock myself away because I know I've got the skills to get really far. So, yeah, I, I dedicate myself to, to, you know, to, to be ready at all times. Yeah. And, um, you, you bet Nate Diaz said it, said this quite recently he says you got to be be ready to take anyone on on your worst day and he, he, he you know he gave me a kick up the ass for that you know and so that that's uh yeah that's how i i, I uh, live you know yeah and uh now you're two and one in your last three obviously it was two two in a row after your your loss to madars flemenas um how how much did you take away from the loss for, to madars to then help you win the last two fights because that that Maddox fight, right? And I respect him a lot. He's a great guy. But like, uh, I it wasn't so much he. I threw that fight myself, and I really, 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 really was kicking myself for so long. My coaches weren't nice about it. They were like, they almost told me off because I just went out trying to kill him, and I, I, I. I uh, I, I didn't have any composure. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the way I went about it, because I, I just went on that, you know, just coming off a big knockout. I hit yeah. him. I, I caught him with a shot early in the first round. So, like, for that fight, it was more like um, 
I thought it was it was a bit like not to compare myself to these two legends, right? But you know, like Conor McGregor, and Nate Diaz, the first fight, yeah, where he's just like hitting him about, and he's just like not worried about his gas tank because he thinks he's just gonna get Nate out of there, and he's just throwing everything into everything. And that's what I was doing with, with my guys. I wasn't worried about my gas tank. Uh, I wasn't worried about my. I wasn't worried about anything. I wasn't worried about what was coming at me. I wasn't worried in phase what he was doing. I was just like trying to smash him to bits in the first round. And then he caught me in a guillotine right at the end of the round. And because I was working so hard, I was I was like breathing heavy as it was. And he caught me in that guillotine. And I thought, like, I can't really remember much after that because I thought I went out. I was accepting the fact that I was going out. But like, I recovered. And then I remember just seeing him, him on top of me, like looking over me. I am thinking, fuck. Yeah. So I don't remember anything in between rounds and then the second round, I thought it was going to be like 30 seconds long, but it, it was like four minutes long. It was just a, yeah, I learned, I become a man overnight in that fight. So I'm grateful for that lesson that Mad Eyes give me because now I can, you know, look out, look how much it's, it's improved me. You know, he give me, he give me a lesson and I'm, yep. I'm grateful for it. And uh, you recently signed a multi-fight deal, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you for, did... for, for no fucking for no reason apparently because oh. they can't get me a fucking they're, they're still pissing about getting me a fight but yeah yeah because yeah, you did say you were going to fight on the fourth of November and then um, I believe your opponent pulled out pretty quickly after that before mm. the opponent was even announced could you tell us who the opponent was? Uh yeah for that um. <laughs> I don't know if I'm I'm meant to say that ah, okay. he's no, like, no worries. Yeah, no worries. I don't see I don't see why I don't see why why I can't say. Mm. But I don't um it was that that Daniel Skabinski. Yeah. Do you know him? Yeah, it rings a bell. Rings a bell for sure. He just fought Jimmy Wallhead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't see why I can't say that. Yeah, no, I think, I think it should be fine. If not, you can, <laughs> you can text me and say, hey, could you cut that out of the interview? I'll cut it out. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you are. Yeah. yeah. But I don't see why not. I mean, you know, why the Fight fuck are you going to see? <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I'm still fighting on the 4th of November. Yeah. No matter but the I'm opponent five weeks out not. now. Like, I'm five weeks out now. No, I don't have an opponent lined up yet. Now that we're still, we're still fucking... Uh, not that we're picking and choosing. We're trying to get. We're trying to. We're taking anyone we can get. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I, I like. You know. I I stay ready for for to, to for them to call me and say we got a fight for you. I signed with them in like March 2019, and I've had like in two of them years, I've I've had some serious like injuries and health problems. So it's not been like I've not been active the whole time, but I've still said yes to nearly near enough unless there's a serious reason why i can't do the fight i've always said yes so it really is like why i don't know why they can't fucking organize it a bit better where they, they you know they, they, they're getting these opponents ready for me yeah uh because now i'm five weeks out like i can't really promote anything mm-hmm. that, this fucking hometown show i just did they announced my fight 10 days before and i'm like the biggest fight in the area yeah. So how are you meant to sell tickets when the, the your, your draw isn't even matched? Like, what is the fucking sense in that? You know what I mean? That, that was yeah. a joke. But I don't, you know. And if they think they're doing this again, they're doing a 10-day 10 10 day fucking job again, they are, I want to get a, an opponent, a backup, and a backup after that because they're taking the, they're taking the piss. And uh, so. if you do get a fight for November fourth, and you win, oh, mate, hundred percent, I'll have one. Yeah, uh, how far do you think you are from a potential title fight? Is if unless you don't want to look ahead? It's not like I don't look ahead. But I can tell you, like in my heart, I really don't. I don't care about that title right now. Okay. Yeah. It's just like I, I, you know, like it's all. But the longer I'm doing this sport and like people are pulling out and there's all this like all these Instagram fighters and Yeah. I'm I'm like, mate, I'm just gonna keep getting better and enjoying the the you know, sport martial arts side of it. 
and be myself and I'll fight whoever. I've literally never said no. Yeah. And it, like, I've never said no. And the, I'll tell you the, the fights I've had to pull out where they retired me with a heart condition. Mm-hmm. Was that during COVID I, or just? That was after the uh, Fig Lack fight. Okay. They said yeah. you can never fight again. Your heart is like in a critical con- critical condition. Yeah. You are you are um there's no point going into that now. I then pulled out of a fight with uh I'm an injury I'm not gonna disclose. But oh, yeah. I, there's no there's no way I could have fought. Yeah. No way. And I couldn't fight this in in that Manchester card in April. Mm-hmm. With another injury that I'm not going to disclose, but it was a fully legitimate injury. So yeah, th- there's the only times I can ever think that there's definitely they are definitely the only times um, I've ever had to not you know pull out of a fight or say no. And um, if uh, any of the viewers on this video uh, know you from Twitter, you know you have that connection to uh, Chelsea Sun. And uh, where did that Man, come about? JLP, yeah, I haven't spoke to him in a long time. It was um, it was of course yeah because you're you're American and you know, that's got to be that's got to be pretty mad for you. That's got to be like a yeah. Well, I I don't live in Germany or I live in Germany, but I oh, do. You? Yeah, I live in Germany, but I'm I'm American, oh. so yeah, 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 you're American. Oh, cool. Yeah, Chael, I was I think I was like fourteen. He was fighting Anderson, and I used to write him on Twitter all the time. Yeah, and then he messaged me saying, "Good man, chase your dreams, pal." And then we never, there was no con- contact ever since. Uh, but then Cage Warriors put a video on last year uh, of me doing a saying, send anyone you want, just don't send anyone you want back. And yeah. then uh, that's like, I think Chael said it in a, in, a, in a press conference, which was like, he just said, you know, he just said it like he does. Yeah. And uh, I said it <laughs> in my first ever cage interview. I wanted it to be a memorable one. And thankfully it was. It was. And yeah. then they, they shared it. And then I was on my phone and I went on my, I went on my notification. I seen that Chael Sonnen had liked this thing that had uh, this other account that shared. So yeah. then I was just like, as soon as I see, it just happened. I was on my phone. As soon as I see he liked it. I screenshot the chart and I said, I'm chasing my dreams. And then he retweeted it and he replied again about another thing where I was like putting on like a gimmick and he was like going along with the gimmick. So I, I the one day I hope I, hope I get to meet him, it's going to be, that'll be like one of the, one of the best moments of, of my, of my career, of my life to us. The man is one of my like idols. And still is today the way he talks about the game and everything. And like he, he spoke on the Ariel Hawani show about me, which is fucking mad. Yeah. Just before the Firmino fight, he spoke about that. Um, and that just created, you know, that them couple of months last year were fucking a lot to deal with after the time off I had. But yeah, yeah, crazy man. What what a legend, Chael P. A real, a real. You, you, you've got to bring him down down to Wales and give him a yeah. show. Right? <laughs> Oh, I mean, if he if he's ever if he's ever uh, in the UK for, for any kind of event or uh, you know, I'll, I'll make sure I'm there. And uh, recently, uh, I believe it was on Friday, Brett Johns got an impressive win, but not the original opponent. And there's been a little back and forth over the weekend and stuff on Twitter with James Gallagher. What what do you make of James Gallagher and the Brett Johns uh, uh, beef? Look, it's. It's a good, it's a good fight, right? Brett's Brett's doing what, you know, he, uh, he, he Brett's doing the thing. He, I think he's brilliantly getting going out, going about getting this fight. Um, and the, James pulled out, and it's the easy thing to say. You know, I've even said like the bot stra, stra bottle job because I'm, yeah. you know, I'm one of, Brett's one of my best friends, so yeah. I'm obviously gonna. Uh, but he might legitimately have an issue. We don't know. But, yeah, I think he's been dealing with injury issues since uh 2020. So, mate, but Brett was fucked going into that fight. Yeah, so, I, I, he tweeted his foot this morning, right? It, it, he had a fuck it, 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 he had a broken rib. Mm-hmm. Literally was yelping on the mat. I'm like, mate, for fuck's sake, pull out. What you, you know, for fuck's sake, pull out. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, I've never seen it. I've never seen anything like it. 
Um, but it must, it just, it, it got better. <sighs> it got better, uh, excuse me. Um, but that fight, I mean, I think the reason why he's, he's playing up now is because Bellator are obviously not going to go out of their way to make that fight happen because Jimmy's a star. A Brett yeah. is a legitimate fucking, legitimately world-class, one of the best bantamweights in the world. Yeah. And Bellator's just overlooking him because of what? Because of what? Yeah, he you know, doesn't. Brett's going to get a big pop after beating him. He's going to keep climbing the right. You know, that Danny Sabatello beat Brett, but, you know, fucking whatever. <laughs> you know, that I, I just think, let make that fight happen. And I, I think Jimmy did, Jimmy fucking James did um tweet saying that he was going to make it for February. So good on him. Let's hope they do it. Yeah, I think James wants to fight as well. I, I don't think he's like avoiding yeah. the fight. I think he does want to fight. Good man. Good man. Respect. Yeah. And um, recently we had Jack Shore pull out of a, of a fight. I know you're good friends with Jack as well. Yeah. Um, what did you, what was the injury? What did it come from? Or was it just like one that he was still dealing with? I don't know if he's disclosed it, so I'm not going to say. I don't oh, yeah. know how he really got it. but um, And the reason I'm not disclosing the injuries is because, you know, you don't want... I think it was a knee from what I heard, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Um, okay, if you're not 100% sure, I won't say nothing, but... Yeah, no, it's... I'm going to yeah, protect it. Yeah, and... and <laughs> but uh, yeah, he... he's, he's, again, he's, he's one who he, he fights injured. Yeah, you know, I don't think you never go into a fight 100 percent right, but you know, then when you get an injury where you're like, right, okay, uh, there's no, there's this is like, this is just a, would be a ridiculous thing to do. Then yeah. you, we've got to put out, and that's what I'm saying. Like with James Gallagher, like he might have like a serious, serious injury, but he's putting Instagram. I, I looked at his Instagram, like he's putting things of him training in his training kit, and I'm like, fucking hell, man. Yeah, you know. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> if you're injured, yeah. then what's going on? What's going on? Yeah. Yeah, and um, he was supposed to fight Kyler Phillips, I believe. How do you think that fight would have gone? Look, uh, Tank had a, a, a difficult last fight, and it, anyone can win on any night. It's, this is it's a dangerous, crazy sport we're in, right? But that's just going to make him even better than he already was. Mm-hmm. So... I think he would have fucking smashed Kyler Phillips. And I think if Ricky Simone and Tank fought another 10 times, Tank's going to beat him a lot of them 10 times, if yeah. not nine times. So this is the game. People shitting all over him straight away after he lost. And... Yeah, I felt that was unfair. Ricky Simone's a really good fighter as well. Yeah, yeah. And he's a, probably a sound guy and he's just had a good fight with Tank. And so yeah. that's why I'm just kind of going off the whole... You know, when you said about the title shot, like, fuck the title. Like, all these boys are fucking weird anyway. So, why do I care about Why do I care about being a champion of, of a bunch of fucking weirdos? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I'm just going to keep getting better and, and look after the people who love me and support me. I'm going to keep getting better. And I hope I'm going to make a lot of fucking money when it's all said and done. So, yeah. <laughs> Now this this part of my show, it's I like to call it the quick fire. It's uh, short answers that don't necessarily have to do with fighting. Some do and some don't, but just basic questions, similar to what Alex Behunin does with the humanizing fighters. Okay, good man, good man. You doing your homework? I like it. Yeah. Uh, so, what do you have a favorite movie? Yeah, don't tell you. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the first one that comes to my head was the the departed. Mm-hmm. You've ever seen that? I, I haven't seen that, but I'll look into it. If you like gangster films or crime films, that's unbelievable. That is fucking unbelievable. Uh, do you have a favorite TV show? Narcos. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I mean. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you're a big video game guy, but do you have a favorite video game? I used to be. I just can't do it no more, man. Yeah. I, I used to like, I used to like Fortnite and Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. 
I can't play FIFA anymore. I bought the fucking last year's FIFA and I just I played it like twice and fucked it off. Bollocks. <laughs> Fortnite's bollocks as well. There's building yeah. like crazy. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, I got no time for that. Yeah. Um, a lot of fighters like to collect shoes. I don't know if you're a big shoe collector. Are you? No, nah, because I'm like, no, nah, I'm not. No, no, I'm like a. I'm pretty useless with clothes. I I, I lose them all the time, and <laughs> I wear like Crocs all the time, sliders. Um, I've lost so many shoes, like, and or I just ruin them, and because I never go out, or you know, I'm just in my Crocs. Like if I'm out day to day, I'll just wear like a pair of Crocs or sliders. Um, you know, yeah. I'm not massive in the shoes. That you know, I don't like. I don't like wearing socks. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite fight of yours? Yeah. Something's got to come to my head. What's the first one that comes to my head? MMA. Yeah, MMA. Your your favorite fight of your career? Oh, my career. Yeah. Um Probably my last one. Your last one? Yeah, it was a very because impressive one. Because I just... Yeah, because I was loving it in there. <laughs> he threw a head kick and I just fed him and done the old... Yeah. Where's that like, gone, you know? I like, I do that in the gym all the time, messing about, and it was the first time I've gone in there and, like, enjoyed it like that. Like, I literally loved it. And there was times I was like, fuck sake, come on. Keep going now. Um, yeah. trying to blast him out and like I cut myself on his head like, I was elbowing him by head butting him at the same time <laughs> boom boom and then I fucking got that but yeah. like I just like every bit about it just I was so present in there like I, I just felt good like you know it gets me fired up talking about it that's got to be my last one yeah uh, and do you have a favourite fight of all time not necessarily yours but one that you've watched MMA boxing <sighs> Fury Wilder Fury Wilder, which one? Because there's been three. The first one. The first one? Yeah, the first one's a good fight. Because he come back from all the troubles, they had two little squash matches and then beat him like that. He did beat him and he yeah. got up off the canvas. And I'd also like Leon Edwards, Kamara Usman. Yeah. Uh, yeah, fucking hell. Um, Where Dave Laval, like, He's, you know, I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting the pair of them and, and uh, training with them a couple of times. And that Dave Laval is, he's a, he is a, well, you know, he's a real nice, real fucking warming guy to be around. Really wise guy. I just feel that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite fighter? I know you're a big fan of Nate Diaz and obviously Chel Sonnen. I used to like McGregor, but not anymore. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck he's doing. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing. What's yeah. he doing? Like he's fucking wheel kicking his sparring partners and shit, like, from flying knees at him and that. Like, um, my favorite MMA fighter. I like that fucking Alex Pereira. Alex Pereira's a beast. Yeah, he's I a lot of fun. Like him, you know. I know he's a kickboxer, but fucking hell, I'm gonna say Pereira. Pereira. And what do you think of his fight with Izzy? Do you think he, he's got a good shot at winning? Yeah. I think Israel, I mean, if you if you lose to someone twice, you've got to be thinking, right, I think Izzy should just wrestle him. I think Izzy has a lot of pressure on him in this fight, and Pereira doesn't really, because he is, at the end of the yeah, day, he's, right. he's a kickboxer, know, you know? He can just go back to get, kickboxing. Yeah. Izzy should just, like, just, like, Fight, 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 stall him on the fence. Pop, 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 move, 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 fake, 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 and try and stall him on the fence. And then, like, just win the exchanges and just fucking watch him. Yeah. Just watch that Pereira before you, you know, he's like a, he's like a python, and he's like a snake. It's going whack. Yeah. Like a crocodile. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a perfect way to put you know it. I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you're very active on Twitter. Do you have a favorite MMA Twitter account? I know you're good friends with uh, Brock Load and Tommy Egan. Yeah, 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 yeah. The boys. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm active on there. I just, I don't know. I just, I don't know. Um, I like fucking 
Paul Acosta. Paul Acosta. He's so funny. He's a lot of fun. Yeah, he's a lot of Just fun. The way his fucking his bro his English is he's obviously like so like choppy. Like oh, he's got Costa. I think at the minute I love him. Yeah, the best part of his tweets though, it's not necessarily tweets themselves, but it's when he starts replying to people as well. And he'll start, and that that I yeah. find that really funny. Those are my favorite bits. And when he's his pictures of him stretching. Like I'm not gonna say what he says on there, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Funny guy. Um, I, have you had many uh interactions with a fighter, another fighter, and that that you've enjoyed, like in person? Um, I'll tell you something now. Uh, fucking, you know, Paddy Pimlet. Yeah. Yeah, he's he, friend um, of the show. <laughs> yeah, Paddy, right? Uh, I don't know if I've ever said this before, but when I took my first loss, yeah, he, I was, you know, a bit like when Tank lost. Obviously, Tank got it a bit worse, but when I lost to uh, Figlack, I was mm-hmm. like, there was so much bullshit I was seeing online, and I deserved a bit of it because I was like. Everyone was active on social media during the lockdown. So I was, you know, I was just winding, you know, I was just pissing about on there. Uh, and Paddy texted me, right? And I don't have the message anymore because I think his account got deleted. Both his the accounts were like, yeah. The, the message was like as long as my as my phone screen. Mm-hmm. Where he said, like, I, he lost his uh, his fifth profile or something and, and people were writing him off. Yeah. And people were... Oh, people shitting on me and shitting on him and and uh I remember looking at it like fucking hell, you know, and, and this was this was before he got signed to the UFC. But he was still he's still a big star. He was, yeah. And I remember thinking like I remember thinking like fucking hell, like, like that's such a nice thing to say. And another one, Dan Hardy is another one that mm-hmm. is like is like a salt of the earth guy. Um, yeah. and I'm to- I'm talking like interactions that people I don't train with. So yeah, uh, but yeah, and then I saw Paddy like when I won my like return fight after my first loss. Um, you know, just really, really re- fucking top man. And if people try and if people are ever trying to say like, you know, people like if I ever speak to people because he's such a celebrity now, and they're like, mm-hmm. I don't say I don't go around telling people I know him like that's not me. Like, I, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll, I'll pretend I didn't hear certain conversations. Like, I'm not gonna. No, but if if I'm talking to someone like I know like well, and they're like they might say about Paddy, then I do use that example about when he messes me and trying to boost my spirits and yeah, um, and Dan Hardy, I, I use another example where he he went for a similar heart thing as me, so you know, and I, I feel really, I feel terrible if I'm leaving somebody out, but they're just guys I know you know yeah. But I, and, there's some really, really, really good people. Yeah, there are. Yeah, for sure. You, you know, but Nathan, uh, you know, I'm not going to, Nathan Fletcher is a really fucking legend. Uh, but yeah, I'll just leave it there because I'll just go on and on and on. Otherwise. Yeah. And uh, to close out the show, uh, I want to give you a platform to plug your social medias. And I don't know if you have merchandise or anything, but if you have any of that, you can plug that away. I'll put it in the links. Yeah, uh, I don't know, but... I do have I have a weekend offender um mm-hmm. uh merchandise, but I'm not the kind type of guy to like promote that because I'm like, why would anyone want to wear a t shirt with me on it? Oh, yeah. uh, there's you've got some fanfare and I think if, if you keep climbing, I, I know you become I mean, a fan favorite. That, I'm like, what that's so, I I just Yeah, but you could be my fan, but don't you have to waste your money on my stuff. If you wanna do that and fair enough. <laughs> that's a terrible thing to say, but I'm just I'm not going to pretend like I'm a fucking celebrity or anything like that. Mm. But, so, yeah, I do have a T-shirt if you want to buy it. There's, I know loads of people, like, say they got it and and they see people wearing it and they message me, like, I'm just, I'm in fucking... I had one of my friend's mother the other day, like, oh, I'm in Greece and someone's wearing your, your fucking T-shirt. And I was like, what? You know. But, yeah, uh, I'm Oban Elliot, Oban Elliot on, on everything. Oban Elliot, ever me on Twitter. Um, and if you if you want to follow a real one, then get involved. Perfect. Thank you so much for uh, being on the show.